we talk so much about like, hey, just go speak to people. Like this is not a conversion event. Like actively taking an interest in other people is a branding exercise. Yes. Building your network, uh, answering questions for free in, I don't know, Facebook groups, they're branding exercises, right? They're not convert. They're so when you do ask, people respond. This is the online trainer show, trainer show, trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. Guys, I wasn't even going to stop at Starbucks today, but I mean, I was seeing you. <laughs> at this point, really I good, just do Carolina. it. Like <laughs> at, this, <laughs> at this point, I just do it to piss you all off for you my literally purple spend drinks. Two and a half times more than I pay you to be mm, this episode. My expensive drink. Mm, on your neon purple mm, drink from oh, Starbucks. Oh, like, like, that's where all my life drink. savings are going. <laughs> Clearly, the biggest benefactors of this podcast, in order, are Romania, <laughs> Lithuania, and Starbucks. <laughs> sponsor. Really, we need a Starbucks sponsor. Oh my goodness, uh, that'd be great. Yeah, we should call them. It's like it's like when I emailed Casio and asked them if they'd sponsor me, <laughs> and then they they never replied. I didn't hear back. Mm, so it's a failure. <laughs> Kettle, I met I met a Brenda Belmontis. Yes. You, yes. How? You meet with this person? She friend requested me. Oh, she's my sister. Yeah, yeah she it, knows you're my co-host. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't it wasn't difficult to figure out. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You the you're in the, is there. You're in the other. I was like, why does she why does she have Kettle in her pictures? And why do they have <laughs> the same last name? <laughs> Mystery Just Deepens. Best fan photoshopping yeah. herself into pictures with me. Right, right. <laughs> Kettle's Kettle Stan, uh, you know, my 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 incredible powers of deduction read out. <laughs> yeah, it should be like that. Like, oh, I met your sister Brenda, that bitch again. <laughs> <laughs> that liar. <laughs> Have you ever seen any of those Instagram know accounts? <laughs> and you know like, what? Any of those Instagram accounts where the, there's just like dudes who just Photoshop themselves really, really well into celebrity pictures? No. Fun. And there's it's it's so funny. This dude will just like he'll just Photoshop Jay Z out of the po- out of the photo <laughs> and just like have his own around Beyonce, and Aww. it'll look it'll look so real okay. every single time. And it's just his entire Instagram is just pictures of him doing like is like you know the 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 uh, Chappelle skit where he talks about the first time that he met Kanye West. I haven't heard that. I've one. never seen that skit. How, oh man, it's how have I never seen that skit? He's okay, on... so hold on just before you continue with that story. Let me tell you how Jonathan's story merges with uh, my sister. My sister has actually real life met Beyonce, they like, know. oh, really? Spent, spent time together, like, in a backstage really? at an event. They had tons of pictures. Beyonce did this whole thing for an organization with little kids that my sister was uh, oh, that's working awesome. with and translated for you know, because kids you know mexico spanish beyonce english so yeah my sister was there it's all so anyway random fact <laughs> well, english color me jealous <laughs> the it was uh Chappelle, i think he was on a talk show and he was talking about oh. the first time that he met kanye west oh, and he okay, had okay. he invited kanye to like a show or something like somebody knew him and uh and and <laughs> And somebody called Kanye and they were watching a screening of some like unaired Chappelle show skits or whatever it was behind the scenes. And somebody calls him and he's like, hello? Yes? Yes? No? Yeah, I'm backstage with Dave Chappelle. Yeah, we're watching skits that haven't aired yet. Yeah? Because I'm dope and I do dope things. And then he hangs up the phone. <laughs> That's right. what Kanye would say though. That's and all that I can think character. about that dude's like that dude's Instagram, his whole bio should just be because I'm dope and I do dope things. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've seen photo Photoshop videos too, like the face swap videos are really weird. Oh, uh, they are they're really, really weird. they're really good, but they're really weird. Yeah, it's unsettling. <laughs> and I want to know how to do it. So That's right. did Denny, so uh, are we really doing the marketing branding topic? Is that is that real life? That's what's happening today? 
Yeah, I said um, I'm not I'm not feeling so hot today. Uh, so I figured oh, that you're just going to talk more because we're going to be talking about marketing. Money. No, actually, I feel perfectly fine this morning. And then um, Jason, who's our head of marketing, just bought a Tesla and took us for a test drive. But he got like he got the super uh, what's it called? The insane mode or the, the insanity mode <laughs> that just goes. like That's a thing. Dude, it just goes so fast, and uh, and I'm I'm soft when it comes to motion. I get so sick. <laughs> no on boats way, and you got motion sick. And so I got like I'm, I'm feel like I didn't throw up or anything, but I feel kind of like queasy, a little shoveled. bit queasy still. Oh. So, um, yeah, that's how sad and so old and so broken I am. You know what that coaster. is, though, Jonathan? That's our vestibular system. You know, the one that controls like yeah, like motion and all that stuff. That happened to me last weekend at the park on the freaking swings like i'm swinging with my kids and then i was like oh my god i gotta stop and then i was like oh Amazing. my god i'm old i am old you guys are old man you're aging in front of my eyes yeah it's just these are terribly sad stories right um, yeah, it's, it's really bringing me down <laughs> it, re it really is has the podcast started yet i love the ads by the way jonathan's so we're we're in we're into the podcast. Amber said yes, we've started a podcast. I I can't tell the banter on podcast from the banter <laughs> off podcast anymore. It's all running together. Uh, so I I have no idea what I'm saying in the who. It it's it's dropped here in the south. So for those that don't know how this podcast works, and probably are really confused now, having now that I've realized that we've been on the podcast for the last. I know five or 10 minutes, uh, two of us are in, are in the South. Uh, Amber and I are, are just across borders of North Carolina and South Carolina. I'll let you figure out which person is in which place if you don't already know. And then we've got our two compatriots to the North. They, I guess they are the North. Is that how I would say that? Yes, we the they, North. They, they the North, uh, yeah. whatever that means, sounds Southern to me. Uh, but in the <laughs> South, it's under 195 degrees and under 99% humidity. So the Southerners are freezing. Amber's there. She's got her delts covered by a flannel shirt uh, and, a, and a New York Yankee cap because she probably feels like she's in New York now in winter because it's under <laughs> 99 degrees in South Carolina. And, uh, and I've, got on my, I've got on my full Nike gear. I'm, I'm, you know, Nike, if you want to pick us up as a sponsor, we're, we're happy with that. You know, come on down. Uh, but, but we're freezing. You know, if it gets... Once a once a leaf drops in September in North Carolina, the UGG boots and the uh, and and the North Face jackets come out. Yeah, the Amber's booted up. He is up. wearing boots. Yeah. Oh my God, Amber, yeah. I love you. And it's it's legit going to be about sixty eight or seventy here today, and that's just freezing weather in the South. So uh, I, I would complain and I would say something about us being Canadians. Actually, when I I was in New Zealand in Auckland. And we went to an ice bar. Have you ever been to an ice bar? No, you walk no, into this huge vault thing. It's like a huge walk-in freezer and everything's made out of ice. All the chairs, oh everything's made out of that ice. Like and they only nope. serve... No, it was, it's... Well, but like as Canadian, they're like, oh, you're Canadian. You could do this. This would be fun. <laughs> right. So I, of course, go in there. And the best part is all of the glasses are ice. And this is my like oh, dumb no. younger days. You're not supposed to break them. But it's kind of fun to break them. Oh. So all of the glasses are ice and it's all vodka and, and we were drunk. <laughs> and I'm like taking off my jacket and uh, because they give you a big jacket and heavy pants. And I'm like, I'm Canadian, I can do this. So I'm like right. sitting there in like a like jeans <laughs> and a t-shirt. And then I just finish and, and they're getting super pissed at me. They're like, no, sir, like you can't do that. You gotta put, and right. all of a sudden I take this this glass of ice and I just whip it against the wall. Just smash it. And they just like, you, that, like you need to get out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so alarmed by your behavior here. That so you. that's that's when it, that that was when I got kicked out of an ice bar in New Zealand. Um but I you I should say that like as a Canadian, I'm I'm hardcore with the cold. Mm -hmm. But the second that it got cold. Two weeks ago, I looked at Allison and said, we need to go to Mexico sooner. <laughs> <laughs> so we saw, did. So we booked in, We booked to go a month earlier. Yeah, I saw, I saw your post <laughs> on the inter interwebs. Jonathan was like, yeah, I'm going to be in Mexico for like the next three months. I'm out. So, uh, and that, was, that is the born and bred Canadian. Now imagine how me, the yeah. Mexican born and bred, transplanted right. to Canada feels right now. I am dying and what? take me to Mexico with you. Don't be a jerk. Right. What, what, what was you your visit? What, if you what was your first Canadian oh, I will. winter? That is a threat. I you will. Know, Keto, Keto, what, what was your first Canadian winter like? Like how I much felt, shock was that for you? I felt like I was going to die. 
because I was shaking so hard, like shivering so hard. I thought I was legitimately going to perish. So there was that. I can't imagine. I can't imagine having your first Canadian winter, you know, immigrating from Mexico. Like, yeah. And, and I arrived in the middle of the winter. Too. Oh no. So why make things easier on myself yeah, by acclimatizing? No yeah. That was no joke. Oh my God. It's no joke. <laughs> this is, it's horrible. Oh but you gosh. ended up the mayor's wife, so it all worked out. I mean, yeah, it turned out. I mean, good strategy. You know, just, I mean, it all turned out, I guess. Yeah, it all turned it all turned out perfectly, as a matter of fact. That's that's a brilliant move. That's a that's, that's a pro move, Keto. You know, I it's almost like you every, planned it from the start. Every story I hear, I, I respect Keto just more and more every time she relays a story because it seems accidental, but the more I hear, the more it sounds like strategy. You know? it really it really, you know, just casually signed up for a dancing with the local stars and, you know, just sure. so happened to meet the mayor. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm on, I'm on to your little trail. Of, uh, Mo moving to a town that is uh, food to you down in terms of size because there's a chance to rise up the social ladder quicker. Right. Right. Yeah, no, sure. it, was it was all plans. calculated. Yeah, it I didn't know what the first thing about Barry, but sure, it was all she's calculated. Like, she's like, if those, I, I want to make sure I move to a town where there's only one water tower. Right. That feeds the right. entire town. Anything hey, bigger than we that. We have two. <laughs> <laughs> we resent that. We have two. It's, it's like the, uh, it's like in Coming to America where they spin that globe around <laughs> and it stops and their finger points to Queens. Queens. Yeah. Yes. You know, that is where I will find my yeah. bride. That's what I did. <laughs> Yeah. That's what and, I did. How have we not quoted coming to America yet? I don't know. It and it's in the eighties, so you know it's in my wheelhouse. <laughs> like, oh my goodness! Boat. I, I oh want goodness. to talk about coming to America more. Perhaps <laughs> we can have one whole episode. Hey, you know what's been? We it was really neat today. Today we aired the episode about the sexual harassment. It was such a good episode. Yeah, you know, yes. and I and yes. I hate to distract people from the current episode that they're listening to, but if you haven't been following the online trainer show. I suggest that you probably like this show's off the rails already. We didn't even know it was started. Go ahead and <laughs> go ahead and log out of this back out of this show. You know, if you're on Stitch, Stitcher, whatever it's called, if you're on Spotify, go ahead and just just cancel this show. It's not gonna if, be that if great. you're listening to Stitcher, then you yeah, you, you yeah. don't even know podcasts. Right. I and mean, like I don't. Yeah. So so go back to episode 35. You don't want to hear the rest of this one. It's gonna be a train wreck. Go back to episode 35. <laughs> Listen to that sexual harassment episode. It's a really insightful episode. You know, the contribution from Amber and Carol was really very good. I, I'm, I'm, I hesitate to say this, but I'm proud of that episode. Uh, you know, that's that, that, and I didn't talk very much, but I'm also proud of that. Uh, Amber talked for like at least five minutes, which is phenomenal. Uh, but it was a really, really good episode. So I want to talk about coming to America some more. No, we, we can't talk about that some more. Uh, we can't, not today. We've used up all our banter time waiter, for the Hey, the waiter, day. waiter, yeah. try the soup. Yeah. Try the soup. <laughs> uh, what, what's, wrong, what's wrong with the soup? What's wrong with the soup? Is there, is there something wrong? Just try the soup. Try the soup, waiter. What, what's wrong? Is it too cold? Is it too hot? Try the soup. Fine, fine, fine. Where's your spoon? Aha. Best joke of the movie at the end of the I just like how it's a movie about like black people from Africa coming to Queens, New York, and then there's like an old Jewish man joke after the credits for no that's, reason. That's basically my life story, Jonathan. <laughs> uh, uh, here I am listening to an old Jewish man tell the story who got motion sickness <laughs> in a in a Tesla today. The uh, uh, took, a left, uh, took, a, took a left turn too hard. So Jonathan's a little bit disheveled. He was in a Tesla race today. That's, there's a secret Tesla race society that you have to be in, you know, oh, you can only get in and if you have, if you own a Tesla, Jonathan's in it, of course, car 34. Uh, <laughs> and he got bumped a little bit, he got side swiped coming around lap three today and uh, it's been a little disheveled. So uh, he's got a little motion sickness. So that's, that's where we are at the podcast today. But we have a topic today. Um, and the topic is something that I'm supposed to talk about apparently it's uh we're we're talking about marketing and branding if 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 I'm understanding that correctly Jonathan is that a real thing Amber says yes so I don't have to wait for Jonathan to say yes uh and another big thing on the podcast I want to congratulate you for this Jonathan because we got the we got our advertising spots under 35 minutes which is amazing <laughs> heard the new <laughs> under half an hour now she's gonna leave all this room for podcasting uh you know when i when i listened to it on our channel our behind the scenes channel i was like that's it it's only it's only it's only three and a half minutes total 
This is amazing. So yeah, they were they, they were a little bit too long for a couple they, episodes. They were there. they were a bit lengthy. You know, yeah. people yeah. were falling asleep during the average. That was a that was a misstep. Um, yeah. in our that, in our podcast journey. That's 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 on that's, us. But, but but you learn better and you do better. <laughs> You know, just like just like branding and marketing, if we can if we can bring it back to our to our topic today, what's what's the officially worded topic today? Well, you today? talk you talk. I don't know. We'll figure that out afterwards. Right, but you right. talk to me about the difference between marketing and branding. That's you, what you I want to do. You give me your line for that because your line my, with that just just my line really for the difference between marketing and branding is that brand marketing is asking someone on a date. Or some people like to say married. Marketing is asking someone to marry you. Branding is the reason that they say yes or no. So that's sort of my 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 mantra when it comes to marketing and branding. Because what we see in our groups, we see this a lot in Kettles and in the groups like I am, and Amber's in the groups. She's always answering things, you know, answering questions. And one thing that we see repeatedly in the group, right? Common complaint is, you know, and it comes from it comes from Debbie, you know. I did all my advertising and nobody responded. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Not Debbie you know? again. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, geez. nobody, nobody responded to my ads today. Um, and this is a common theme, right? Like we see this a lot in the group. Uh, yeah. What are you guys doing for clients? Because I'm posting all my client information. I'm posting my enrollment and nobody's responding. Marsha, right. Marsha, Marsha. And it's sort of, underpinned by your branding right so in the analogy may i take the analogy a step further is that okay jonathan it's like that scene in coming to america now <laughs> no, it's, not, no. It's, it's nothing like the scene in coming to america let it go watch, i gotta watch that movie again you've got tesla brain jonathan <laughs> type down um so what was it? oh if i may expand on that analogy kettle is it okay if i expand on it okay. of course kettle, please kettle, do, kettle please do. Good. I won't ask Amber because I'm frightened of her answer. So you go out, right? You put on your best suit, put on your best tux. You know, you look looking dapper. You're a dapper looking young gentleman. You, re you rent your best limo, right? Credible limousine. Let's say mm -hmm. it's a stretch Tesla. That sounds exciting. That sounds <laughs> sexy. So you're in a stretch Tesla, right? Uh, you've, got, you've got your best wedding ring, you know, fine cubic zirconia wedding ring you know you spend at least a hundred bucks on this thing uh you go you, you take to the streets smelling good and looking dapper and you ask 3500 random people to marry you and invariably you get 3500 no's you know no matter how you dress it up you got to respect the hustle though you got it you got to respect the hustle i mean fine <laughs> cubic zirconia i mean this thing won't turn green for at least two years uh, <laughs> So, so you go out in your finest threads and you're just, you're a man about to, a gentleman of leisure. And you ask all these people to marry you and everybody says no, because it doesn't matter how much you dress up the marketing. People have, if you have no brand, people don't care how good the marketing is. And I think that's where a lot of people fail. The, so what, what are your about thoughts what there, brand Jonathan? is, I mean, yeah, no, you're right. Um, you could have a little bit of initial success, uh, but it will be incredibly more expensive. Uh, yes. The, the, you know, the landscape is competitive if you don't give yourself any kind of an advantage, ability to speak to people in ways that others don't, um, access to communities that others don't have access yes. to. Or, or even a recognizable name that people trust. I mean, if you're firing, let's even say paid ads, which is what most people think about with marketing. Mm -hmm. If you're firing paid ads, you could fire the exact same paid ad as somebody else who has a brand name or who has mm -hmm. even a little bit of a reputation to who they're like marketing to. Right. E even if it's like, like if they've ever heard your name before ever in any context, <laughs> literally, yeah. like, um, you you will get results from your on your marketing dollar that far outweigh what somebody else would get, and um, it just makes everything easier. And a lot of the actions that are taken uh, seem to be very short sighted. That are kind of taught commonly seem to be very short sighted. Like you, we talk so much about like, hey, just go speak to people. Like this is not a conversion event like actively taking an interest in other people is a branding exercise. Yes. Building your network, uh, answering questions for free in, I don't know, Facebook groups, 
they're branding exercises, right? They're not convert. They're so when you do ask, people respond. There you go. That's the main thing. And so the, this this idea of like, oh, I put out content and nobody responded to it. It's like <laughs> content is not about conversions, right? Content is about branding. And then, yeah, you might get some conversions from it, but the idea is people get to know you. This whole idea of know, like, and trust, right? People get to know you. The right kind of people will begin to like you if you speak with some sort of personality, if you if you take sides with things that you believe in or approach things in a way that, that aligns with your values and make that known, like these are my values. And, it's, and what's interesting is that um, it doesn't even mean, like your values could buck the trend, right? There will be people who align with you. Uh, an example of this is right. um, somebody out there is a good friend of mine who was very anti-mask. And so um, he just, for, for his own reasons, I don't know exactly what they are, um, is very much against wearing masks anywhere and, uh, and just believes that there is no reason why anybody should be forced to. He believes that COVID is largely uh, a hoax and overplayed. And regardless, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Like I'm saying this as a fact that this is what he believes. I'm not saying this like, it matters why you believe it or if you believe it. Right. But my point is every single time that he goes out into public with his kids and with his family, um, he inevitably gets told to wear a mask and then he shows them his exemption card, which in, in Canada, like our rights basically say that if you get an exemption card or if you say that you're exempt because you're allowed to be exempt for like certain medical reasons, nobody's allowed to ask you why. Um, he, he, makes a point of posting a very lengthy social media post on Facebook and usually Instagram talking about the experience and how ridiculous it is. And it was, what was interesting was when he started to do this, he had people debating him in the comments and like yelling at him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, now they've basically all given up because I mean, they just don't care, but everybody in the comments now is like a cheerleader for it. Right. right. Mm. And so what's interesting is that these people actually, and this is, this is my point these people will probably buy from him more readily than somebody yep. else because he believes the same conspiracy than they have to do. Right. And, um, and, and he's giving a voice to their conspiracy, right? Mm -hmm. So they feel aligned with him. Yeah. Um, so like whether you agree with the idea of being mask or anti-mask or whatever, um, put those beliefs aside because I think whenever anything interesting happens, this is, it, it's, it's a good learning moment. Um, you have to separate yourself from your own beliefs, from your own biases, from your own emotions, and, and look at it as a lesson. I mean, this person is, I don't agree with him on this point, right? Like I wear a mask, I'm happy to wear a mask. Um, and, and, and I believe that you should, but regardless, I'm still friends with him because it's allowed to be friends with somebody and not agree with them in every single thing that they do. Right. Mm -hmm. And I still believe that what's happening, particularly on his platform, is a very interesting learning experience. Mm -hmm. Right. And it doesn't, I mean, you don't have to take that and be like, oh, I need to like throw up stuff about, uh, you know, <laughs> anti-vax and, and now like, oh, I'm just going to talk about how vaccines are evil. Uh, it, what, what matters is that if you really believe in something, if you really believe in something, even if it's controversial, that could be part of your brand, right? right? You have to decide whether you want it to be. And that's a very important decision to make because you either do it or you don't do it. Right. You don't just put in like one post about politics. Right. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. like, Confuse your audience. Like you either make religion or politics or conspiracy or whatever, like a part of your platform and your brand, or you don't. There's no in between. And so if you're gonna do it, like milk it, man. <laughs> or don't yeah. do it. Um, Ooh, for real. This podcast is made possible by viewers like you. Except you're not viewers, you're listeners. Um, okay, well, I guess a word for my sponsors. If you're a fitness nutrition coach that's looking to master online coaching so that you can help more people, make more money, and have more freedom, then the Online Trainer Academy can help. 
OTA gives you the framework, knowledge, and support to have predictable success with your online coaching business. From marketing to business development to how to assess and motivate your clients online, it is constantly updated and refreshed to keep up with a dynamic market. Not only that, OTA is proven. In seven years, we've helped over 30,000 coaches in 87 countries go online. Truth is, we know what works, so you can get right to the success part. And in case you're busy working a full-time job or you're a full-time parent, know that you can go at your own pace. There's no deadlines to complete OTA and you have lifetime access. That said, if you are ready to make a rapid change and finish the course in the next 8 to 12 weeks, you can expect to invest 3 to 5 hours each week on the program. And here's the best part. If you join today, you will make an extra $1,000 a month in 90 days or I'll give you your money back. So if you're ready to build the fitness business you want and make the money you deserve, go to onlinetrainer.com slash academy to enroll today. And I hope to see you in there. Are you still trying to pick your online training software? If so, let me make this easy for you. Go with PT Distinction. It's truly the best, and I'm not just saying that because they're our sponsor. We actually use PT Distinction for our own online fitness business, online trainer coaching, and we're really happy with it. From onboarding to programming to client communication, PT Distinction has everything you need to run your online fitness business smoothly. And it's super simple to use. Now, normally they offer a free 30-day trial, but as a listener of the online trainer show, you get a free 60-day trial so you can make sure you love them before spending a dime. If you want to deliver first-class service to your clients while reclaiming your time, then visit onlinetrainer.com slash PTD to sign up for your free 60-day trial today. So, I mean, whenever you see stuff like that, uh, I, I follow it because I'm, I'm interested in looking at the ramifications of it. The same um, as American politics. I mean... I think it's fascinating what's going on from a marketing and persuasion standpoint. Yes. I don't offer any opinion on either side of the coin, but holy crap, it's fascinating to witness. And so if you actually want to be a student, right, try to suspend your beliefs while looking at it as a marketing experiment and you'll learn a lot. And it's really, really interesting. 100 percent. That has nothing to do with marketing or branding. I just think that's, that's all. That's all right. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bring us. I'm gonna bring us back on the rails back. because <clears throat> one of the things I know about Keto is that Catalina Belmares is a brand. Um, <laughs> we we all know that. Like and and here and here's what I'm saying, Keto, and I'm gonna defer to you. Like everybody that follows you could probably answer some basic questions about. And, and here's how I judge it about the likelihood of what you would and wouldn't do. You know what I mean? Like we understand you to that extent as followers, friends, whatever you want to call us. And I think that's a good indication that you have some brand. Like when people approach me to work with me, they will immediately start with, well, Ren, I know you don't, you're not big on the scale, you know, mm, and that's true. Yeah. And that's an indication that I have some, subs I have some consistency in my personhood, my brand, and people know mm -hmm. that if they talk to me about the scale, what I'm likely to say. In your case, I know people know about uh, you in terms of in terms of gender equality, in terms of sexual harassment, in terms of mm -hmm. in terms of empowerment generally. Mm -hmm. You know, surrounding women's rights and advocacy and issues like that. Like it's it's not a guess. And one of the greatest sort of group arbitrages that you ever did was when you first started. You know, you're in the as Jonathan likes to say, the expat group of, mm -hmm. uh, of, of women who've gone to, but talk to us a little bit about, about how you, like, when did you decide that this is what I am, who I am, and I'm not, or did you ever have to decide, you know, I'm going to be the most authentic version of Catalina that I can, regardless of what, you know, marketing or branding, because I see a lot of coaches try to change it. They try to they try to sugarcoat it. Like, mm -hmm. talk, talk to us a little bit about how you feel you established your brand, because I think you have some nuggets here for us. Yeah, in my case, it wasn't like a like a, a conscious decision. It's just very much who I am. There are certain mm -hmm. things that matter to me, and I will speak about them openly, often, and to anybody who will listen, and even to those who don't want to, because that's the point, right? Like sharing information <laughs> with people so that they can gain new perspectives. And so... In doing that, definitely you find your people because most of the women who choose to work with me are strong women 
who mm -hmm. don't want to put up with any crap from anyone, who, uh, who are, who are kind of like in the middle of that struggle between the social expectations of beauty imposed on women mm -hmm. and what they want for themselves. There's always that battle. How do I know that I'm actually doing this for myself and not because I feel like I should look a certain way because society tells me to? So those are very interesting conversations that we have. And it's totally on brand for me. And, and I feel very comfortable having those conversations because I've had them with myself. So um, I talk about mental health. And so that's another kind of like point of connection where people can just be like, oh, you get it. Like you look like you have everything together, but you know the chaos inside, right? Mm -hmm. Like you know when things are not working the way they should. Um, so it it yeah, it hasn't been a strategy. It has definitely worked in my favor, just because I have stayed true to what is important to me, and that automatically brings you people who share those point of points of view, and that's exactly the people that I want to work with. <laughs> that that makes sense. Jonathan, if I could, if I could defer back to you for a second, you may, it, you know, in terms of, I see two things in terms of brand, right? I see your ability to communicate with people genuinely, but also I see the authenticity of the person, of the person, you know, like, are we, are we, are we challenged as coaches to establish what our brand is if we have a tendency to defer away from our own authenticity? Like, doesn't that make it harder to establish who you are, how you are as a brand if you're, if you're always trying to manufacture some avatar of yourself? Doesn't that make it more challenging to brand yourself? Like, if, if you were talking about six-figure training because you see people talk about six figure training instead of saying the things that you normally say, which is, yeah, that's a bunch of crap. I can teach you how to make 1000 extra. Let's start there. Like if you faked the funk on a nasty dunk, wouldn't that make it harder for you to brand yourself? Uh, speaking in NBA terms. I mean, it's junk. That's a good line. Jonathan. I love it. You're going to miss the shot. It's going to go kaplunk. Right, right. The team sucked. I get it. So, so, but, but, you know, in all seriousness, you know, do it's gonna I, be impossible I, to do it. I mean, I, I see this battle with coaches all the time, coaches it, through OTA coaching. You know, right. what should I do? Well, what would you normally do? Well, I don't want to be myself. You know, I, I, and this happens a lot. I mean, at the end of the day, um, look, there are outliers of examples of like celebrities. Where right. I mean, I'm thinking like like Duck Dynasty, for example, or in Canada, company like Trailer Park Boys, um, mm -hmm. where they actually, over the period of their entire show, like decade plus, they were never in public, not in character. Right. It's possible. I don't want to live my life like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I just, I, you know, I, 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 to answer your question truthfully, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I really don't know. I certainly can't do it. I would have a very hard time coming up with content, coming up with conversation. I would have a very hard time meeting people if, if it was in a way that is, um, and, and maintain my energy and excitement towards what I do. Right. If the messaging and everything that I'm putting out is not true to who I actually am. Um, and, and part of that is as I grow, as I evolve, as, as a man, as a father, as a businessman, that very much changes. Mm -hmm. um, I have gone much deeper into mental models, into objective logical decision-making, into happiness, into uh, what, what is it that we can accumulate as professionals, as business people to maximize uh, happiness to maximize joy to maximize freedom and what's particularly interesting with that is one of the main things that actually leads to joy to happiness to freedom is actually appropriate constraints mm. and so i you know it would be untrue right if i was like oh i never work it's like no like here's how i work here are the constraints that i put on when i work um, and I try to uh, lead by example. I think words 
I mean, this is coming from somebody who's written a lot of books. I, did you know that when uh, that I wrote 11, a few books? From what <laughs> I understand, it's been 11 bo books That's written right. in 1 million words. Uh, yeah. And I'm just guessing. I'm grasping at straws there. It's not like I've ever heard you say that. But Ball remember, pipe. this show is the best thing you've done today. This is the best, Remember. Yeah. Remember, Thank you, never Joe forget. Brown, 2020. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll ballpark the amount of books that I've written. But the, I, the idea that um, words I actually find are, are, I wouldn't say meaningless, but are far less meaningful than actions. Mm -hmm. And it's particularly difficult today to actually watch somebody's actions and like see how they actually live. And so I try to showcase that because I think I, I, I feel like by leading by example, little things, like I'll give you an example of this. So I was, I was asked to speak at, a, at an Australian um, leadership mastermind last week um, to their people. And, um, and of course the time change is difficult. Mm -hmm. And so in order to, I, I said, you know, I'm happy to do it, uh, but it's gotta be in my working day. I, I finish at five o'clock cause that's when I'm home with my family. And that meant that uh, they had to do it at 6 a.m. their time on Saturday morning, which means they had to start their event at 6 a.m. on Saturday morning for their people if they wanted me to speak. And I just said, look, this is, I love you guys. I'm happy to do it. Mm -hmm. But my family is more important. And I hope you understand that. Mm -hmm. So totally understand if it doesn't work to have me there. And, uh, and, and, you know, it ended up, we had a great talk at 4 p.m. on Friday afternoon. 6 a.m. on Saturday morning their time. And then I guess their people just went and like had breakfast and then got ready for the next speaker at night. But to me, like, and the hosts, of course, made note of it to everybody who was, who was attending that session live and then other people who decided to sleep in and catch the replay. But they made note of it. Like to me, that action is a far greater teaching moment than anything that I said. Right. And it doesn't necessarily mean like you've got to stop your day at 5 p.m. It just means like you've got to build in constraints. Like I'm happy to work. I'm happy to do these things. Um, but when you really look at, at, at uh, fulfillment, at joy, at happiness, and you actually look at all the research, I mean, the research is fascinating, but like family is right up there. Family, community, spouse, it's right up there at like number one in terms of things that, and so, and money is, once you have your basic needs met, is actually reasonably insignificant. Um, and so I try to, that to me is like, that's branding, right? Like mm -hmm. not just what you say, it's not content you put out. I mean, look at my personal Instagram. Like I was on it for like three weeks and then I was like, this is stupid. I don't want to do this anymore. And I just stopped posting. <laughs> <laughs> but every single person who follows me, I take time to say hello and engage them in a conversation. There we go. There we go. And so even though you don't see me post on Instagram, <clears throat> I have 10 to 20 conversations a day on Instagram with people. Right. You don't see that. Right. Again, this is like, what's important. I think it's much more important to actually have conversations to people than to try to post about some quote unquote values that you may or may not have because you think that it's a good way to get likes. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. right. And so I try to lead by that. Right. Um, and I believe and talk to me in, five years, 10 years, I believe that that's a way better way to do business. Um, and even if it isn't, it's a way better way to live your life. And I'm quite happy living my life the way that I am. There it is. I'm, I love it. I, I, love, I love that. I love that 80% of that was in sexy Jonathan Goodman voice, just sort of like a little raspy <laughs> to it. Like it was very alluring. And when you combine it with the beard, I mean, I think we're all aroused here. <laughs> Moving so forward mean. though. You know, so so branding, branding is where I see it fall down more than marketing. That that's what I see from from marketing my perspective. Is easy. Marketing it's, it's can, the easier the, part. You can you can you can know your numbers and you can copy and paste or you can hire an agency. Right. Reasonably cheaply. Marketing is don't get me wrong. I mean, high end marketing skill is extremely valuable to attain. And probably if you become a very good marketer. Uh, you will be successful in anything you do. Don't get me wrong. Um, but very good marketers understand that branding actually comes before and is like 80% of it. 
Right. But um, the the I wouldn't even say the minimum. Like marketing, good enough marketing is actually relatively cheap and easy to ascertain. The reason that it doesn't work has very little to do with the marketing you're doing mm -hmm. and much more to do with the lack of brand and connection that you've built leading into that marketing. What do people think of you in any way, shape, or form <laughs> before they come across your marketing? Or, or do they think of if you they in don't, any way, shape, or form? That's it. If they don't, you're going to have a hell of a time. Yeah. No right. matter what, no matter how good your marketing is, you're going to have a hell of a time because there are always going to be people who are better at marketing and have way more money to spend on marketing than you that you're going to be competing with. Right. But if you build a brand, if people think, if people know your name and uh, understand what you represent and how it may or may not appeal to them before they come to you, we've done, we've done a lot of customer insight research. Mm -hmm. This this actually even surprised me. Um, basically, I think I've mentioned in the podcast, we did a massive jobs to be done study, basically, like, that's been like a year long project, it's like a five month mm -hmm. process. And, um, and what it really ends up with after this huge process is you have 13 in depth interviews, we had 13 It doesn't necessarily have to be 13, but it's a reasonably small amount, very in depth interviews with people who are representative of your entire audience. And then you bunch Based off of those interviews, you do a lot of assessment of it, um, qualitative and quantitative assessment. Based off of that, to try to identify basically why, what people think of you and why people are hiring your product, what problems they have, and, and why they're making the shift. Um, and, then you, 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 and then you shift your marketing, you shift your product basically to match them. And so uh, we have this, and to verify our results, we did a single larger scale interview with our customers just to make sure that we didn't miss the mark with our 13. And, and fortunately, you know, we, we did, everything's good. But what's interesting is um, John, we, it, was, it was nicknamed like John's cred, basically like John's credibility. Mm -hmm. More than 65% of people who bought OTA, the primary reason that they bought was my credibility. There you go. Wow. Is, I mean, is that not a testament? to what it is. And that, I mean, that blew me away. Like, I didn't think it was anything, but like, like the far majority, like nothing else even came close to that. And um, I don't think out of, out of 80 people in that follow-up survey, I don't think a single person said an advertisement. Right. Wow. You know, the, the advertisement might've been the conversion mechanism. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Like they might've converted because they saw an, or when they saw an ad but yeah. they didn't convert because they saw that. Right. Exactly. And I think that's the key part. What a proud moment for you. Congrats on that. Yeah, I was, um, I was very proud. Uh, I didn't actually know what to say. I was surprised. Um, Did I, you feel I, something? I kind of wish that it wasn't there that were way. Emotions. I kind of wish that it wasn't that way. Cause um, <laughs> you know, I like to think that like the personal trainer development center uh, meant a lot more than it looks like it means. No, mm. that garbage. Like the personal trainer nobody's, development center name. Nobody's yeah. listening. Yeah, nobody's listening. <laughs> Nobody reads that stuff. Oh. <laughs> all, those, all one million words went to waste. I, I think that's. <laughs> I think that's an interesting point, and probably the best point of the podcast so far. Actually, like, next time, lead with that. Um, we can close this thing down like uh -huh. thirty minutes early. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give three tips with you, with your permission. May I, may I give some tips? And these these are let's small. Hear, let's hear the first one first, and then we'll talk. And then we'll we'll judge if the other two can be said. Here, yeah. Here's here's some small scale tips. These are not Jonathan Goodman level tips, but on a smaller scale. It, so number one, if you're if you're if you're operating on social media and that's one of your branding, you know, one of the places that you brand, put the social back into social media. You're not big enough or important enough for just media, and that happens a lot. Like The Rock mm. can just post stuff. And people will talk about it and talk to him and he doesn't have a reply back. But if at our level, you have to be social with your social media. So don't let people comment and you don't comment back. Love don't, it. Don't not go to other people's pages and engage with their page. 
you know, really concentrate on the social side of media because a lot of times we just get stuck on media and then we say, nobody liked any of my posts. You're, you're not a, you're, it's people talking to you that you close your eyes and shut your mouth and turn around when they talk. Of course, mm-hmm. they're not going to talk to you the next time. Uh, so that's tip number one. Is that good enough for, for me to go into tip number it, two? It is incredible Amazing how happy tip. people are to hear from me when like, they follow me. Let me let me give you an example. Like you're somebody. Like like you. Somebody like, somebody followed me on Instagram. Crazy. I sent back a message that said, "Hey, thanks for following along. Just wondering, how did you hear about me?" Oh, uh, a friend of mine posted a photo of your book. Oh, cool. Who was that friend? I'd love to say thank you. It was this person. Uh, hey, by the way, did you get a copy of the book? No, I didn't. Would you like the link? Yes, I'd love it. Here's the link. <laughs> then he sends me a screenshot that he bought the book. This guy saw my friend, saw his friend post a copy of my book, didn't buy the book, followed me. Right. <laughs> and then because I said hi, he bought the book. Correct. <laughs> there you go. Full circle. Is that not the most incredible thing? Oh, hi, Alex. There you go. We got to go because my, uh, my, my 2 p.m. meeting is here. Uh, Alex, <laughs> you want to say hi on our, on our podcast? Oh, hi, everyone. This is my first, uh, first appearance on the podcast. It is hi. You know, it's true for me. It's been so we don't get to hear here. the other two tips from Ren. Let's we'll hear the other two later. tips. We'll do no. We'll do the other two tips from Ren. Alex is now an honorary member of the podcast. There All right, welcome, Alex. My my sec my <laughs> second tip is to be consistent with your message. You know, don't dance your message all over the place. Like if you have something that you that's important to you that you can you can talk about consistently because people will go back. You may not think so, but I've had people that have seen me message in in any category. And they, and they will tell me upon hiring me, I went back a couple of years to see if you were talking about the same thing. And dude, you've been talking about the same thing since you've been on Instagram or Facebook. Be consistent mm-hmm. with your message. Uh, and, and, the, and the third thing, and I always tell this to OTA students, is, um, is share your story. Like yeah. you have no idea how I- immensely powerful the reality of your story is to people out there. Look, people don't want to hire deities. They do not want to hire people up on Mount Olympus. Uh, and in almost every religious text, the gods came down in flesh to intermingle with the people when they had to get a message across, right? It's the same thing here, man. If you're perfect, it <laughs> that makes That was people, deep. It, yeah, you I mean, should have led with that. Really, that was, that was, yeah. that's the that, best that was probably my best led <laughs> with that. Yeah. I could, I could have started with that. But, it, but it's the reality. You look like against, across any religious text. But what I'm saying is, People don't want to hire perfect people because it makes them very, very nervous in dealing with you. The, you, you, you have to present some type of humanity to mm-hmm. attract people to your business. And in the absence of that, you're, you're a thing and an entity, not a person to be hired. So share your story, man. Be, as authentically as you feel comfortable with sharing it, I share mine on a regular basis. I know that, I know that Carol does because I stalk her on the internet. Um, and I don't know about Amber because, quite frankly, I'm frightened of her. I try to interact <laughs> with her other than the podcast. Um, so those are my three tips. Thanks, Alex, so much for letting us, uh, you know, push into your space, sir. Alex is the head. Yeah, of- Alex, what do you have to say about uh, uh, the difference between marketing and branding? Uh, absolutely nothing. Good. Great Thank job. you for that, Alex. <laughs> Great job. Really appreciate you being here. Riv- and, riveting. Um, yeah, riveting. This is, why I ch- this is why I popped in. Figured I had some insight to share with you guys today. Yeah, really happy wow. to have you Thank as a representative you. of our Thank company. You. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. It took us yeah. to episode 80 to get that, but it was it was worth the 40 episode wait, Alex. Uh, <laughs> we try to we try to only bring you people who really provide value here on this podcast. Right. <laughs> you guys asked me get episode this 1 in a normal podcast. Well, I was like, mm-hmm. let me at least prepare for 40 episodes so I can bring real value to not yeah. only you but, but the listeners and so I'm really glad I was able to do that. <laughs> Again, thanks for being here, Alex. Your, um, your light shines out. like a lighthouse. Uh, this has been episode something of the podcast. Show notes, online trainer academy.com slash podcast. Uh, nailed it. That's not right. No, Amber said it. it's wrong. That's yeah, it. You nailed it. You uh, nailed it. That, that's podcast. Show notes, all that stuff. Keep those Tricero Taco Tops uh, images <laughs> coming. We want to get a good collection of those. And we'll see you guys on the next podcast. Jingle, jingle. 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 This is the online trainer show, trainer show, trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. <laughs>